A lot of the calculations we did in this unit were based on something called colligative properties. And we said that colligative properties are those properties that are based on uh, the number of particles dissolved in a fixed amount of solvent and not on the inner particle attractions that are involved, okay? So if things like freezing point, the change in freezing point or the change in boiling point are based on these colligative properties, then we're basing those, the way we calculate those, on the fact that there's the, on, the, on the number of particles and not on how they interact. But the more of those particles I put in there, the more concentrated I make the solution then, okay? Because co concentrating solutions means putting more solute particles in the solvent. The more I put in there, the more inner particle attractions I have. And if you have more inner particle attractions, then the calculations you make for freezing point, depression, and boiling point increase <coughs> um, are, don't actually fit what in reality happens. So the, the, calcul the calculated amount is, a, is, is not quite on the money from the actual amount, okay? Does that, does that answer your question the way you want it answered? Does that make sense to you, Carol? Carolyn? I mean, I guess I The more particles you have, the more inner particle attractions you have, which means that you no longer are looking at just colligative properties anymore. You're looking at other things besides that. <coughs> Now, I said that when we use the Van Hoff factor, which we symbolize as I, to calculate boiling point increase and freezing point depression, I was just the number of particles. Okay? We counted the number of individual particles it broke up into, right? Okay, so that's basically what I is, the number of particles in the solvent. Okay? Um, at this level, that's what we do. And so I is strictly tied to this colligative property idea. This idea of the kinetic molecular theory of solutions where there are no interparticle attractions, just like in gases. Our ideal gases have no interparticle attractions, so our ideal solutions have no interparticle attractions. But when the particle attractions get great enough, we no longer, it no longer behaves like an ideal solution or an ideal gas anymore. That makes sense? So that's what's going on. And why it is, the more concentrated it is, the less we can depend on these calculations to get our answer. Uh, and, and in fact, here's what I was going to. I can actually take into account those inner particle attractions. We don't use it that way at this level. Okay? Okay. I have another question. You do that light on going through it and going through the particles. What was that called? The Tyndall effect. Tyndall effect. Just like Tyndall concrete. It's the same spelling. Only it's not the same guy. Yep. Okay, molarity of particles is kind of the same idea as the Van Hoff factor. Okay? If I have something that has, um, is it molarity? Of molarity, okay. Say I have um, calcium chloride, okay, which if it's a solid and I put it in water, how many particles do I get? Huh? Three particles. I get one calcium and I get two chloride particles <laughs> for a total of three particles, right? All right. Let's say I've got a one molar solution of calcium chloride. By definition, that is 1.0 moles of calcium chloride in one liter of calcium chloride solution. All right? All right. For every mole of this, how many moles of particles do I have? For every mole of this stuff, how many moles of particles do I have? Three. Right? Okay, well, then, if I've got one mole of calcium chloride 
in one liter of calcium chloride solution times, um, and I've got one, then, and I know that we can make a molar ratio out of this whole same idea here with the total number of particles, okay? So I can say one mole of calcium chloride and three moles of particles, couldn't I? So what do I get? I get a molar solution that is three moles of particles in one liter of calcium chloride solution, which is three molar. Sure, I mean you just you just follow the same basic idea here, okay? If you if the 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 number of particles the solute breaks up into will give you the molar um, concentration of those particles, okay? Because it's a, in this case it's a three to one ratio, it's a two to one ratio. That's what you use, okay? Well, I hope I can.